Let's go to a walkthrough of how you can create your own custom integrations in Billship to connect with your external system, CRMs, APIs, and so on. To begin, we'll start from scratch. Let's talk about the custom integration we're going to be building. Over here, I have a super base table to do's, and we're going to be able to save to do's in this table. This table has three columns that we're going to want to fill in content, view string, and labels. And we're going to be building a custom integration in Billship that will allow us to insert records into this table. And we're cheating here a bit because if you go to Billship's notes library and scroll down, you'll find that we already have a super base integration. But that's okay because we want to show you how you can build an integration like this for yourself from scratch. And the concepts that we covered here will allow you to build any custom integration you want for your future projects. We're going to build this flow as a tool. To begin, we'll add a new trigger and then we'll add the tool trigger here. Our tool is going to be used to save to-dos in our Superbase table. So we'll call our tool save to-dos. We're not going to ship our tool yet because it's not doing anything useful at the moment. So we're going to switch back to the build tab and let's start working. The first thing we'll add here is an input. This will be our to-do message. I'm thinking we can send to-dos that we want to save in natural human language. For example, let's say that we want to create a to-do for sending a report tomorrow at 5 p.m. So we can just send a to-do message to our tool to do that. But we're going to want to extract structured data from that to-do message so that we can save this into our super base table. So to extract structured data from any piece of text, Billship offers a number of LLM powered JSON generator nodes. We'll go to the node library and here you'll see the OpenAI JSON generator node. We're going to be using this one. So let's add the OpenAI JSON generator node. And you'll notice this has a special icon next to it. This means that for this particular node, you can opt to use the use credits option. If you're in the early phase of prototyping or you don't yet have an OpenAI API key, you can select this option and this will simply deduce credits for every execution of this node from your Billship account. So for the input here, we're going to remove the default and we'll select our to-do message input. And next we need to specify the schema. So this will change. And if we go back to our super base table, the three fields that we want to populate here, content, view string, and labels. We're going to go back and let's add a new field of type string for the content. We're going to add a new field for the What's it called? View string. And then finally, we're going to add a field for labels, but this will be a array of type string. And we're going to call this labels. Now let's test this out to see if we're able to extract structured data from a to-do message. So we're going to test the flow and we're going to say, send email report tomorrow at 5 p.m. And here you can see we get back structured data and this is great. We're getting back the content, send email report. We get back the due date tomorrow at 5 p.m. And then our labels array is currently empty. So maybe what we need to do is just set the temperature to 0 0.7. But with that out of the way, we're not able to extract structured data from our to-do message. The next thing that we want to now work on is how to create a custom integration that will allow us to connect to Superbase and insert data into our table. There's many ways that you can do this in Billship. One way is by generating this with AI, but we're going to be doing it from scratch. And the way I like to do this is by starting with a starter script node. When we talk about custom integrations in Billship, what we're really talking about here is custom nodes. To begin, I'll add a new node here and I'll select the starter script node. The first thing we're going to do here is rename this. So we're going to say insert row. Now we need to start working on the actual logic of this node. We also need to specify the inputs that this node will take. Now, depending on what custom integration you're building, the requirements will be different here. But one thing that I like to do is look over the documentation for the integration I'm looking to build. 
and use that for reference as I'm building the node. So I'm going to go and Google Superbase JavaScript SDK. And I'm just going to click the first link. And then on the left hand side, we can see a number of database operations that we can do. I want to insert data for now. And then here we can find some sample code. So here we can create a record. Here we can create a record and return it. So this is the one that I want to do. To get started, what I'll do is I'll copy this code and then I'll go back to Billship. And now we'll need to add this logic. And to do that, we'll open up the code for this node. And currently it's not doing anything. So what we'll do is just delete everything in between the function. And I'm going to paste that I just copied. So you can see here, I'm getting a type error. Cannot find name Superbase. That's because I need to initialize the Superbase client. So if I come back to the documentation here and scroll up, I should find the example how to do that. And this is where we initialize the client. So I'm just going to copy this code and I am going to paste it here in our function. And then I'm going to need to move the import from inside of the function to above the function. If it's not obvious by now, this is a Node.js environment. So if you're building your custom integrations, you can take advantage of any of the popular NPM packages that may align with your requirements. In this case, we're using the Superbase NPM package to be able to connect and interact with our Superbase tables. But we're not finished yet with the configuration. We don't want to hard code our Superbase data API URL. And we definitely don't want to hard code our Superbase API key. It makes sense for these to be dynamic values that you can specify to this node. The way to do that in Billship is by passing these values as inputs. You'll notice over here on the left hand side, we have a single name input, but we're actually going to remove that. Instead of name, our first input will be Superbase URL. We're going to copy this. Instead of hard coding this URL, we're going to paste that. Next, we're going to need to create a input for our Superbase API key. And I'm going to copy that and remove this and paste that. We also want to be able to pass as input the table name that we want to insert data into. So instead of countries, hard coding countries, we're going to create a new input table name and let's remove countries and put the table name instead. Now we need one final input for the data that we want to insert. So instead of having this hard coded object, we're going to create a new input called new row. And we're going to paste that here. One thing that we're forgetting to do is return the data that we get back. So below this, I'm going to return that data. And you'll notice that we have these type errors. Property new row does not exist on type node inputs. And this is because we actually need to switch over to the inputs tab and also define the inputs here. So you see how it still says name? Well, this is where we can change that. Instead of saying name, we're going to go back to the node logic and create new inputs for each of these. So let's start with the Superbase URL. We're just going to copy this. And the crucial part here is that the key value needs to be the same name that you specify here. So in our case, first one here is Superbase URL. And you'll notice that the type error for this one is already went away. So if we go back to the inputs, next we can specify a label. I'm just going to use the same value that I copied. And then you can enter a description here. That's optional. You can select the input type. We want to leave this as a string. And then we want to mark this as a required field. And now let's do the same for the Superbase API key. We'll add a new input. And as I add these inputs, notice here on the left-hand side preview, how they show up. So the key is going to be Superbase API key. For the label, let's use the same thing. And this is also going to be a required field. Now let's do the table name. 
add a new input, key table name, label table name, string, and required field. And lastly, for new row, this is the data that we want to insert. We're going to add a new field, key new row, label new row. But instead of a type string, this is going to be of type object. And we can assign a default value below here of an empty object. Now, if we go back to our node logic, you'll notice now that we don't have any errors at all. And this is good. This means that we can now save our node. Now, I want to stress that we just did all of that manually. So to save time, you can always use Bullship's Generate with AI feature. Or if you want to edit the node, you can also modify the node with AI. So at this point, our custom integration is ready for testing. And we can now wire this up with the rest of the nodes in our tool. First, we'll need to fill in these four inputs. Let's add the Superbase URL. I'm going to go back to my Superbase project, go to project settings, and then go to data API. And in here, I'll copy my project URL. Then I'm going to go back to Billship and paste this value here. Next, I need to specify my Superbase API key. Now, I already have this saved in Billship as a secret. So I'm just going to select it from here. Next, we need to specify the table name about the Superbase table editor. You can see that our table name is just to do's. So I'll enter that here. And now we need to specify the new row that we want to insert into our table. And for this, what we're going to use is the output of the JSON generator node. Now, before we publish our tool, let's test that it actually works. So bring up the test panel here. And then we can use the same to-do message that we already have populated here. Send email report tomorrow at 5 p.m. I'm going to test the flow now. And as you can see here, the response that we get back is our newly created row. If we go back to Superbase, you can see that we have a new entry in our to-dos table. We've now verified that our custom Superbase integration is working. So from here, what we can now do is go back to our tool trigger. Now we can ship our tool. One thing that I should have probably done in the beginning was rename the flow to something more relevant. So we're going to call this save to do's in Superbase. Once you have your tool with your custom integration publish, you can start integrating this with any agent builder of your choice. Bullship provides guides for various options. For example, here's an option to integrate this tool with your cloud desktop client, and you have all the guides here on how to set that up. To get this set up in cloud is pretty straightforward, but you'll just need to make sure that you have, of course, the cloud desktop app installed and you have Node.js installed on your machine. Then you can just copy this command and execute it in any terminal of your choice. That should refresh the cloud desktop client. And now if we go to look at the list of tools available and scroll down here, you'll see that we have our save to do's tool. And now we can simply prompt Claude to start tracking to do's. Here's the to do that I want to track. So we're going to submit this message. Now, if it's the first time you're using the tool in the Claude desktop client, you'll get a prompt like this to confirm. So I'm going to select allow always. And it says here that it has successfully created the to do for us. And we can verify that by going to our survey stable. And sure enough, we have our new to do here. And at this stage, you should be very proud of your custom integration and the tool you just created. So it's okay if you feel eager to share it with the rest of the Billship community. So why not publish it to the Billship community library of tools? We're going to do that back in Billship. We're going to go back to the build tab. And next to the ship button, you'll find this button. You can click that. You can export as a function. You can share a remix link, or you can publish to the community. You'll notice how this auto fills in all of the inputs for us, but we get one error here. We need at least one example saved before we can publish this to the library. So let's do that. We'll go back to our test. And because we recently executed our workflow, we get a response back and we're going to, at the bottom here, save this as an example. And now if we try to publish to the community library again, this time we should get no error. 
And now all we need to do is submit this. And congratulations, your new tool should now be available in Billship's publicly available community library after a short moment has passed. If you've done this before, then you know you can go to billship.tools and scroll below and here you'll find the tools published by the Billship team as well as from members of the community. And that's a wrap for this video. Until the next one, happy building and happy billshipping.